was after the game, but back here at the baseball. Hold on, and I don't do my intro on camera, but the Mets played tonight. Obviously, they played the Reds. They played them on Apple TV Plus. Oh, I just love them when they go on there. I don't know about you. I just love them when they go play on there. But they uh, won tonight. It's going to wait a minute or two. Seconds wait for some people to come in. So now Wardy's on right now. But <clears throat> that's one three to one. They won two in a row. Two in a row. And uh, the pitching has looked really good. Very strong. So that's a great sign for the Mets. That's the best thing that's happened uh, since the beginning of this throughout the short season. Uh, seven games into the season, and the Mets have pitched really, really well. So that's something to uh, hang your hat on, and um, which is a great sign. Because the biggest concern I had about the Mets this year, biggest concern I had about the club this year is the fact that the team, uh, the starting pitching was up in the air. I'm very concerned about where the pitching was in terms of uh, consistency, in terms of the innings, uh, they got off to sort of a slow start in the first two games. And then Quintana pitched really strong tonight. Uh, get into him a little bit. Uh, it's hard for me to sort of go through this because I didn't watch the game. I listened to them on the radio. Before we get this video further, please hit the like button. Yeah, so Quintana pitched five and two-thirds innings. Uh, he threw, let's see how many pitches he threw, 102 pitches, 56 strikes. So it's 56 to 46 ratio. It's not very strong for him. Uh, he's, he has to throw more strikes. Uh, to be effective. And looking at his line, he pitched five and two-thirds innings, five hits, gave one run, earned run, he gave a home run in the first inning to, uh, what the hell's his name, to Steer in the first inning. Um, and he really, I mean, aside from, he pitched rather well. But obviously the uh, the pitch count in terms of the strike ratio is very hard. He needs to, needs to cut that down. But uh, he pitched really well tonight. Um uh, Hello, Paul. How you doing? Uh, work on your channels. Well, thank you, sir. It's good to see you. A long time. Uh, I would mention if you write to me in the chat, just call me the, the, the hut. But uh, it's for another day. So, uh, hey, great to see you, man. Been too long. Too long. But, uh, yes, so Quintana had his stuff going. He... He struggled in the first start. He struggled in the first start because the fact is, uh, in that very first start, uh, he had a tough first inning. And because that first inning, uh, that's why he was out by the fifth inning. And then the Mets had to go to the bullpen. Um, they pitched rather well tonight. Drew Smith actually pitched well. He got the win tonight. Um, and Brooks Riley came in, walked the batter, struck out a batter. Adovino had a very clean eighth inning, which I was glad to see. Um, sort of half and half on whether the Mets should have brought him back, quite frankly. And then when Diaz came back today, and back-to-back -back appearances, he struggled. He threw, let's see how many pitches he threw in the ninth inning. 16 pitches. It seemed like a lot more in that ninth inning, I'll tell you that. 16 pitches and nine strikes. <laughs> you know, it seemed like a lot more. And then ninth inning. I wonder if his availability, if they'll be available tomorrow. Because tomorrow they play at 4 o'clock. Um, now, please hit the like button. I want to get some likes in here. But I thought that, uh, I don't know if he's going to be available tomorrow. Be interesting to see if they get into a tight spot, what the Mendoza um, does in the ninth inning tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. Hmm. I don't have the matchup for tomorrow. I guess uh, uh, Severino will be gone. But I don't know who's starting for the Reds. I did not check before I started doing this live stream. I'm such a great YouTuber, aren't I? Such a professional. But uh, the pitching, really the pitching over the first four games, uh, the pitching for over the first four games is really, quite frankly, uh, the reason this team is where it is. It should have a much better record, obviously, because this offense is not picked up. It picked up a little bit tonight with, uh, uh, with McNeil hitting a home run late in the game. But this offense is, is pathetic. <laughs> I mean, right now. Because you got guys that are ice cold. I mean, Lindor is ice cold to start the year. It's like, it's like he's ice man. <laughs> I mean, he's like the ice man right now. Um, so he's he's hitting 038, folks. Man. He did have a sacrifice fly. He did tie the game up in the fifth inning, I think it was. Yeah, in the fifth inning. 
Normally I keep score, but I didn't keep score tonight. So I'm all screwed up here tonight. I've not kept score. I knew, normally keep score. But uh, some things are hectic here at the HUD. I don't have uh, right now. I don't really feel like doing that right now. But uh, so, yeah, but Lindor is at 038. He was leading off the game because Nemo didn't start tonight. Uh, Nemo has to deal with, he's dealing with some kind of hamstring injury. Uh, he should be back tomorrow. I was reading it earlier. Uh, I talked about that on the Prospect channel on there. Uh, Pete went over 5 tonight. He did have a, an RBI. He had a ground, uh, he had a, a force play at second. In the seventh inning, that put the Mets in front. He had a great game last yesterday. I mean, that home run the ninth thing. I did not think that ball was going out. I really didn't, folks. That that ball going out was a, was a shock to me because it looked like he got under it, and that ball just carried. I tell you, it's been crazy here. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know, folks, how crazy it's been here in New York uh, the last uh, few days and really the last few hours. <laughs> We've had nothing but terrible weather here. It has been raining like crazy. And not just a little rain, folks. I mean, heavy rain, heavy rain, and then today we had an earthquake. We actually, and then we had an aftershock. I, I, we had an earthquake years ago. I felt it, but this wasn't that bad. Not where I'm, where I'm living. I went out. Came, I know this is what you want to listen to, but I just so you know what we're dealing with here, and the kind of weather and situation here in New York. Um, I came home, went out, and I have a plant on my table. I came in, didn't notice anything, but that plant was moving. <laughs> so that's how I knew. I was like, something, something's not right. But this offense is not right at the moment. And one of the things we have to sort of deal with is this offense picking up. I think they'll pick up. Uh, Francisco Alvarez had a rough night tonight. He bat I mean, I'm surprised they batted him third. He's still hitting 333. His OPS in the first seven games, 943. Unbelievable. Struck out three times tonight. A little overwhelmed. I think he's pressing a little bit. You should keep him down the lower part of the lineup because I think he's press he presses, he tends to press too much. Obviously, him being so young of a player. His catching's been good. Been calling games have been good. Can't really complain about the way he's performed, quite frankly. Um I will mention this. And the guy that is the star of this game, folks, the guy that's the star of this game, even though Jeff McNeil had a home run in this game. And gave them the three one lead. The start of this game was Brett Beatty. You know, give the guy his due. He has played great defensively, and uh, it's great to see because, quite frankly, uh, he's he's doing something he's he didn't he's not doing what, like what he did last year. Last year he was catching the baseball with his face. He's not doing that this year. He's he's catching the ball. He's catching everything towards him. He's making great plays. He's catching balls in the hole. Stone runs out from, from behind the base, behind third base. Got no complaints about him. You know, and I complained a lot about him last year. You can't catch the ball with your face. <laughs> you know, and he did that a lot last year. That game in the, I guess on Sunday Night Baseball was a, was a, was a disaster. Complete total monkey crap. <laughs> Cluster F, if you know what I mean. Uh, Stalin Marte's been struggling. He's gotten off the slow start. 192. He had a home run opening day, but has not done really that well. Uh, had two strikeouts tonight. Now, I forgot to mention this in the video yesterday, and that's uh, Tyrone Taylor, who had a big game yesterday. He had the big hit, had the winning hit last night on the second game of the doubleheader. I failed to mention him in my previous video. He's been okay, scored a run in the, in the game. Uh, he's been pretty good. He scored the first run of the game. Uh, even though he's hitting 176, he's look, he looks like a guy that can hit late a game. We'll see. Too much of him, to be honest with you, even when he's with the Brewers, I have not seen him that much. So, uh, Harrison Bader, who's sort of been like the invisible man, but he got a stone base tonight and he scored the second run of the game. That was huge. That was huge. And uh, went one for three, struck out two times. He's doing what he's supposed to do defensively. Now, why is DJ Stewart on this team? Why has he been on this team? He is worse than Daniel Vogelback. If that's possible. He's worse. How's he? How can he be any worse than than Vogelback? 
And he went 0 for, 0 for 1 tonight and walked twice, but he struck out. This guy is a disaster. I thought I felt that way last year when he was playing for the Mets, that he was a guy that I really didn't trust. And I'm surprised the Mets ha- have had him here for the first week. Uh, John Bobillo, 3-2, get it right. Okay, okay. Yeesh. I'm not, I'm not uh, perfect. Get it right. Okay. Sorry. Yeesh. Yeesh. Watch. I listened to the game. I told you I didn't keep score. I don't keep score. I forget about stuff. 3-2. Fine. They, Diaz gave up a run in the ninth inning. Okay. Yeesh. And, of course, uh, they burned Zach short. I, I, I have a question. They, the Mets got called on a couple of these obstruction plays. I saw the replay on the short uh, attempted steal. How come that the the, 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 uh, the infield didn't get called on that play for obstruction? It was a shortstop, right? How come he didn't get called on that? Because you could have called it on him, you know. On a very, very strange call. It's a very strange rule, quite frankly, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it's good to see the Mets finally got off the schneid. And I would say this is, you know, the negativity, I tell you. I'm so glad they're back playing games because they have to play. So one thing about baseball, is like we all know, is that every day is a new day. And the fact that they had so many rain delays, so many really rain outs, and it has been very difficult doing videos. I'm going to be honest because the sort of the negativity is sort of overwhelming after a while. And I felt a little overwhelmed with the negativity over the last uh, couple of days. Especially since we didn't have any games to talk about. There was nothing new to talk about. It was just that 0-4 was sitting there. And and uh, then it came 0-5. And people were just ready to, to trade Diaz and McNeil and Nimmo. And Lindor can't lead. And Pete has to go. And it's been a little too much, quite frankly. But to be able to see this team now start to sort of build. And it's always the pitching. The one thing that happened last year, I think we know this is the pitching was so terrible. It was so bad, folks. And you know it. You know it because you watch the games like I watch the games. Starter couldn't get out of the first inning without giving up two or three runs. Starter couldn't get out of the fourth and fifth inning uh, and get any outs. And they had to go to the bullpen. And they would bring in these mineral relievers. And most mineral relievers stink. And the more you use these mineral relievers, the more they get exposed. And the more they get exposed, the further the ball goes out of the ballpark. So that so the fact that the starting pitching has been so good. Manaya pitched great on Monday. Hauser pitched great yesterday. So did um, Jose Buto. And obviously Quintana bounced back from his shaky first start. Um now McGill's gonna be out. You know, who knows how when he's gonna come back. But uh really the, the, we're gonna see how things go tomorrow with Severino, because he did not pitch well at all. Um on, on Saturday. So he's a guy we're going to have to keep an eye on tomorrow. I will be able to watch a good portion of the game tomorrow. The one thing that has happened over the first uh, week is because I've had to work a lot and we had Easter, I haven't been able to watch the games. So, and even with this annoyance with being on Apple, you know, I didn't get a feel for the club sometimes when you don't listen to the radio all the time. Because uh, I used to listen to the radio all the time throughout the 80s and the 90s and listen to the games, you get a feel for the games. Uh, I get the feel for the team. It's hard when I have like these two new these two new guys who are pretty good. The, the guys, uh, Ryan McCarthy, are pretty good on the radio. Hey, what's up, Stony? I made you a mod, man. You are now a mod on the channel, uh, and you finally made it to a live stream. Finally made it to a live stream. But uh, so I haven't been able to watch the games. I've been sort of very frustrated. Plus, people have been screaming at me here. <laughs> <laughs> about the club. And now I'm starting to get a chance to see this club now and listen to how they're pitching and stuff. The most important thing is uh, the most important thing now is to get this pitching rolling because the pitching will carry you. And, that, and we all know that. Uh, is this star-studded? No. But the last year's was star, star-studded and where did the Mets go? Nowhere. Did they make a lot of money? No. But that team last year, those stars made a lot of money. How much are they making now? $67 million. The Mets are paying Verlander and Scherzer, and they haven't pitched at all. Um, and he, and uh, 
Uh, TFX 121 says, is Lindor really batting 038? Yes. He's hitting 038. I'm looking at the MLB.com game day. That's for Reds. He's hitting 038. His OPS is 250. <laughs> On base plus, it's 250. It's it's a tough sled. You know, it's going to be tough for him. But, you know, he's got to just got to carry on. You got to keep grinding. He'll, he'll grind it out. You know, he's, he, he's a notoriously slow star, to be honest with you. And hopefully he'll, he'll carry it um, and get himself right. And he will, you know. Um, Pete's been pretty good. Alvarez has been good just offensively. Uh, Beatty has looked pretty good. Um, the rest of the lineup and the rest of the guys <laughs> need to sort of get, get on a roll, start playing games, get into a routine. And just, just just let it all hang out. And then tomorrow we got Severino going tomorrow. And I guess uh what's going on Saturday? Who's going on Sunday? Who's going on Sunday? Does anybody know who's pitching on Sunday? I know. I'm so, I'm so great at this job. So great at this job. I don't know the pitch. This, this is what happens when you work a lot. And you got a lot going on. Uh, but Severino will go tomorrow. Uh, I would guess Manaya will go Sunday. Sunday, yeah, I would think Manaya will go on Sunday. And then Hauser on Monday. The Mets will be playing on Monday. I would mention that uh, Julio Tehran will pitch on Monday against the Braves, and that'll be very, very interesting. See how well he pitches against his former team. Um, I know that uh, Strider got knocked out of the game. I guess in Atlanta, he did not pitch well. Um. So that's interesting to, to note tonight. Uh, oh, TFX121 says, Dream Row is a winning streak. Yes, it is, man. Yes, it is. Uh, Stony814 asks, yeah, who, finally, glad to be here. Who's pitching tomorrow, Hut? Tomorrow, Luis Severino is pitching. We'll see how he pitches in, in Cincinnati because that is a good young team. Uh, a couple of things just to go through it. Jonathan India went three for five in the game. Uh, he was a bit of a pest tonight. Uh, Steer had the home run in the first inning. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz, he had, he struck out. He had, <laughs> Brooks Rayleigh had a big strikeout against him. He struck him out in the seventh inning, I think. Yeah. Struck him out in the eighth inning. It was the sixth inning, the fifth inning. It, it doesn't matter. Let me, let me double check. <laughs> let me double check. Six and two thirds. All right. In the seventh inning. So he had a big uh, strikeout against De La Cruz, and he's hitting 250. But uh, Steer has a 1308 OPS. Wow. He's gotten off to a fast start. Farley's gotten off to a fast start. He's hitting 438. De La Cruz is sort of shredding water a little bit. He's hitting 250, 705. They're a good lineup. <coughs> and I must mention that Hunter Green really pitched well tonight. He was really good tonight. Uh, he went six innings, gave up three hits, gave up a run in the fifth inning, and struck out six in this game. So he he pitched really well. It, 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 they didn't move, they didn't win because they didn't lose because of him. Uh, he did everything he needed to do. So that bullpen blew it. Cruz blew the game, and uh, Pagan gave up another run. Isn't it Pagan the guy that was from, with the Twins? Was he was with the Twins, right? And he was hurt last year, wasn't he? Well, uh, Emilio Pagan, I think he he pitched for the for the, the Twins a couple of years ago. Uh, Sony eight fourteen says uh, the Mets going to be good for us. I like uh, Sean Manaya. Manaya is pretty good. Manaya is going to be good. I think. I think that uh, I like what I saw on Monday. Uh, Want to see how some of these guys are against the better lineups. This is a good lineup. I kind of figured that Quintana would be pretty good against uh, this team because they're a younger team. And a guy like Quintana would eat up a young team. So I, I, he'll probably pitch again in the series against the Braves. I think he'll give up some more runs in that series, in, that, in, that, in, that, in his start, I guess. I think he'll be pitching on uh, Thursday? Wednesday, Thursday, we'll see. But I would, I would expect he'll be giving up runs against them. Because an older lineup, a more mature lineup, will not like you know chase after his uh, after his changeups. So well, I'm going to end the live stream here. 
But I will, I want to thank you. I'll be back tomorrow after the Met game. We'll talk more about the Mets. And I'm going to try to do more live streams off my phone. Because I know when you do it on the app, it, it makes a creates a better situation. You get more more interaction. Streamyard's pretty good. And we'll do Streamyard in, in the near future. But uh, I want to thank you all for coming by. Please hit the like button before you go. Helps out the channel. Thank you all for coming by. And thank you all for participating in the chat. And uh, we'll hopefully we'll get it three games in a row. It's going to be tough tomorrow. We'll see how uh, uh, Severino pitches. Keep our fingers crossed. He'll pitch better than he did last week. The big thing with him is his health. He seems to be healthy, but he didn't pitch well last year. But he was hurt too, uh, I think. Well, thank you for watching this live stream. Have a good night. Let's go, Mets, and I'll see you later.